superficial facial layers. Wait, is it facial or fascial? Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be dissecting an opera port of a decompressive laminectomy. So in the previous a &P video, I'll have a link in the description, we talked about the anatomy of the spine, specifically with the central nervous system, so talking about spinal nerves, how they work, their pathways from extremities to the brain, brain to the extremities, etc. And with this procedure, decompressive laminectomy, we inferred just from the name that decompressive laminectomy, meaning they are decompressing a compressed nerve, spinal nerve, because laminectomy essentially is talking about the lamina, which are layers of spinal nerves. I should actually look that up. Make sure I'm right. Okay, so I'm glad I googled the laminectomy again, because I feel like when I first looked at it, it was saying that it was layers of spinal nerves within the spinal canal, but when I looked at it again, no, that isn't right. At least I don't think it's right. So a laminectomy or the lamina are these bony protrusions on the vertebrae and a laminectomy would be taking out part of it so then it would make more room in the spinal canal because currently if you are getting a decompressive laminectomy, that lamina or that protrusion is compressing the spinal nerves that run along your spinal cord and you need to remove some of them to release that pressure. <gasps> and that is our root operation release. Now, I also did a quick check in the index of the ICD-10 PCS code book to see if it gave the option of just release. It actually gave two, excision and release. You will have to look at your op report and confirm that it should be release instead of excision. When I was reading our op report, I'm sticking with release, and when we start reading it, I'll let you know why. So I'm going to put release right away, because that's what I think it should be. Coders, after we read through this, if you believe it should be excision, let me know and your rationale behind it, so I understand. So just a little summary of the root operation release. I'll also have a link in the description to the root operation video that talks about release. So release is the objective of the procedure. You're relieving pressure on a body part. And usually in the diagnosis, you'll see that they'll be talking about there's some type of blockage, etc. And the procedure is to relieve that pressure caused by the blockage, so they might be taking out the blockage, etc. But it's usually very common in the spine or in the joints, that sort of thing. That's usually, I'm pretty sure that's the only body systems you're going to find it in, is spine, joints, etc. So with release, we are going to be coding to the body part that is being released, that is being relieved of the compression. Now, let's actually read through our op report, and I'm going to be highlighting as I go the information we will need, and I'll be talking through why these areas are important and how it fits into coding in PCS. And I'll also have somewhere along here a visual of what I'm highlighting, so you have that visual aspect of seeing the words. Okay, so preoperative diagnosis, lumbar epidural abscess, lumbar stenosis, L3 through L5. So we're talking about in the lumbar spine, the third lumbar vertebrae through the fifth lumbar vertebrae. Postoperative diagnosis, it's exactly the same. Operation performed, decompressive laminectomy, L3, L4, L5. And they also have evacuation of lumbar epidural abscess. So here we're starting to get into why I think it's release over excision. But anyway, so the description of the procedure says, the patient was brought to the operating room, induced and intubated without difficulty. 
He was rolled prone on a Wilson frame table, and the lumbosacral region of his spine was scrubbed with betadine. Scrub, brush, and wash with alcohol. So we already know it's going to be taking place in the lumbar, but they are also reinforcing lumbar sacral region, so we know that is the body region we will be looking at. The lumbosacral incision was marked out with the aid of a C-arm fluoroscopy unit. So they use the word incision. This was prepped and draped in sterile fashion. It was infiltrated with 1% xylocaine with epinephrine and opened with a 10 blade. I do want to note fluoroscopy unit. We may have to code for fluoroscopy. I'm not sure. I'll highlight it anyway. Once we get through it and if they talk more about fluoroscopy, then we'll figure out if we need a separate code for fluoroscopy. Also, the lumbosacral incision was opened with a blade. So usually when they use the word incision and a blade, it's usually going to be something bigger than a puncture. So we're probably looking at open. I should be writing all this down as we go along. Body part. We will get more specific on the body part. Just for now, this is our general region approach. I'm going to say open. As we get further into the procedure, we may change it, but I think it might be open. Bovi cautery through the superficial layers led down to the spinous process of L2 through the sacral ala, ala, ala. So we know that we went all the way down to the spinous process. So the spinous process, that's part of the vertebrae, so bone. A subperiosteal dissection of the spinous processes and laminae of L3, L4, and L5 ensued. So they're talking about dissection of the spinous process and the laminae. So, so far they are down to the body part they are, that they are actually going to be operating on and they haven't used a scope of sorts to see where they're going and they still haven't said anything about a puncture, so I'm going to say open. They had a somewhat large incision so they could see all of those body parts until they got down to the one they will be operating on. So I'm sticking with open for this one. Deep retractors were placed in the wound with retraction at L5 area on the right. Also, the use of retractors, so clearly they're opening the skin up even further so they can see the entire spinal cord in the area of the lumbar, L3 through L5. Again, I'm saying open. Purulent drainage was seen in the psoas muscle, P-C-O-A-S. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So purulent drainage, this is where we're getting into, I think it's release. I'll explain more as I read through. This was irrigated out and cultures were sent. That's partially why. A lex cell was used to remove the spinous processes of L5, L4, and L3. So that may sound like excision, but I'll continue to read and tell me why my rationale for release is the way it is. The same lex cell was used to thin the laminate at these levels. A number four kerosin was used to complete a decompressive laminectomy of L5, then L4, then L3. Decompressive foraminotomies were performed on the right as this was the area found to have epidural material. As the foraminotomies began to be performed, purulent drainage from behind the nerve roots at L3 to 4, L4 to 5, and L5 to S1, so now we're getting into the sacral region, came forth. This was irrigated out again after cultures were taken. Further irrigation with a pulse jet irrigator and bacitracin solution was performed. At this point, closure began. A drain was brought out through a separate stab incision. Hemostatic agents were not used due to the infection present. The lumbodorsal fascia was closed with interrupted O. Vicral suture, superficial fascial layers were closed with interrupted 2O vicral sutures. The skin was closed with a 4O subcuticular stitch. Sterous strips were applied and a dressing was placed on the patient's back. The patient awoke in good neuro neurologic condition and was taken to the recovery room. So, why 
I say release. Because they are talking about an epidural abscess and lumbar stenosis. An abscess is some form of blockage that was happening in the epidural space at the lumbar level of the spine. Lumbar stenosis, that's another word for a blockage. That was taking place through L3 through L5. And since the operation was the laminectomy, decompressive laminectomy, so shaving off or taking out the lamina that is causing pressure, but also the evacuation of lumbar epidural abscess. So I believe, I believe I'm interpreting this correctly, that since there is the epidural abscess and that stenosis and they were draining out that purulent fluid that was found in that area of the epidural space, I think that is also causing pressure on the spinal nerves. So that, along with the bony protrusion that was shaved off or excised off to relieve pressure, I think release is more appropriate for this procedure. I'm not going to say drainage because that purulent fluid, etc., that abscess was causing pressure. So to relieve the pressure, you got to drain it. Relieving pressure, release. I'm going with release as my root operation. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let me know. I will also refer this sample op report onto the forums and ask professional coders and see what they think and if they agree with me or disagree and then if I get anything back I'll make a quick vlog video explaining it. Device? They didn't talk about a device. Aside from that drain, there was no other device. They didn't bring up anything else of fluoroscopy. So I'm not comfortable at the moment coding for fluoroscopy. And I'll have to look what a C-arm fluoroscopy unit is. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what that is. And it was only brought up at the very beginning where they said the lumbosacral incision was marked out with the aid of the C-arm fluoroscopy unit. I don't know what that means. Let's do a quick Google search on a C-arm fluoroscopy unit. Hmm. Okay, so a C-arm fluoroscopy is, it's a fluoroscope which is used by a physician to guide a needle to a specific area while watching that needle on a live x-ray screen. If we had more information on the fluoroscopic portion of this, then I would code it. But knowing that fluoroscopy usually asks for contrast in the contrast column of the table, they didn't give us that information. I don't know if C-arm fluoroscopy is different from regular fluoroscopic guidance. I have no idea. So we are not going to code for the fluoroscopic guidance. If we were in a professional coding setting, we would be able to find out more about that information and if needed, we would code it. But for right now, let's just assume this is practice. Do not code for fluoroscopic guidance at this time. We won't code for it. And as far as a qualifier, with this table, I don't know if there's going to be any information in the qualifier column. So we're going to put a question mark. I don't know if there's going to be any more information on that. All right, we need to update our body part. So the spinal nerve is what's being released. And that is L3 through L5, which is in the spine or CNS. Now just because we can, let's actually go into the book and make sure our body part is acceptable and then we'll find out what our body system is. So we will go to the index for release. Actually, let's go to decompressive laminectomy. So laminectomy, we'll see what it brings us to specifically. Laminectomy. So I have excision and release. We want to do release 
and they give the option of CNS or PNS, central nervous system, or peripheral nervous system. Since we are talking about the spinal nerves in the spine, that is the central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system is any nerves outside of the spinal cord and brain. So we want CNS. So then we can just go to our CNS body system. I'm going to release really quick. All right, so they give an option of lumbospinal cord or lumbar spinal cord. They don't go into specifics on what levels, so it will just be lumbar spinal cord. So that is how we dissect this type of op report. I will go onto the forums, give them this op report, tell them what I think it is, and see if they agree. From there, I will let you know what they come back with if we are correct, or if not, then we'll redo it with the guidance given by professional coders. So, you can subscribe to this channel if you want to see the PCS coding version of the decompressive laminectomy using this information. You will get notifications of all my videos, so you're always in the know. You can comment below if you have any questions on this, if you think the root operation for BSA should be something else. Let me know what your rationale is and we'll talk through it and see what happens. If you found this interesting, confusing, let me know and why, because that feedback is very helpful. You can like this video if you enjoyed this setup and this topic and this procedure. And I will see you all tomorrow when we actually build the PCS code in our PCS code book. Bye!